Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to take our first steps into the world of object-oriented programming, or OOP. By now, you should be comfortable with the basics of Java syntax, data types, variables, and running simple Java programs. Now, let's build on that foundation and explore some core OOP principles. So what is OOP? Well, object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm, way of doing something, that uses objects to design applications and computer programs. Objects are instances of classes which can contain data, attributes, and code, methods. Some key principles of object-oriented programming are encapsulation, which is the bundling of data variables and methods um, that operate on the data in, into a single unit or class. Okay. Inheritance, a way, a way to form new classes using classes that have already been defined. Polymorphism, the ability to uh, present the same interface for different underlying types. And abstraction, which hides the complex implementation details, showing only the necessary features of the object. We'll look more at these much later. But in simplicity, classes and objects. A class is a blueprint for creating the objects. And an object is an instance of that class. Let's see a, a simple example using the string class, which you're already familiar with. The string class is in Java is used to create and manipulate strings. A string is a sequence of characters. Um, here's how you can create a string in two ways. First way, let's do uh, string greeting. equals, in quotes, hello world, and with a semicolon. So this is creating a string without using a specific keyword to do so. Very similar to what you did with the uh, variables of different data types. Here is the true way to do so, which will be creating a string using the new keyword. All this variable salutations. So string salutations equals new string. Hi there. Although you can use the new keyword to create a string object, it is not necessary because a string is a special class in Java that allows you to create instances uh, of this class directly by just assigning a string literal. Okay. So we have our data type, the variable that you're going to give it. Um, this data type, of course, being a class. The variable you're going to give it equals new, that same data type there, but in parentheses, we give uh, what's needed to create that instance of the object. Okay. Speaking of strings, let's look at some common string methods, such as char at, uh, which returns the character at a specific index, uh, length, which returns the length of the string, uh, substring, which returns a new string that is a substring of the string <laughs> to uppercase, which converts all the characters of the string to uppercase, to lowercase, which converts all the characters of the string to lowercase.
So we have our string greeting, which equals hello world. Okay, so we're gonna use a uh, chart at to get a character at a specific index. So char, just call it ch, equals the greeting dot char at one. So we're getting the index, or we're getting the character that's at index one. When we look through a string, our index is started at zero. So we're at zero and then one. So we'll return e to char, to char. <laughs> um, so we'll see that here, the character at index one will be what's printed out. For length, uh, notice all these are dots in the name of it. Uh, we're going to int length because it's going to return an integer. It's going to be using length to get the length of the string. Uh, so degree dot length. And we'll do a system dot out print line to give the length of the string for length. Uh, we'll do substring to get part of the string. So substring, you give it the beginning index and then the index that you um, you're going up until. So in X7, so we got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes, space counts. And then 7. So we'll start at W. 8, 9, 10, 11. So we're going up until 12. So we'll, 11 will be the last one we get. So we'll get world. Okay. Um, string to uppercase. <laughs> Literally, to convert string to uppercase. <laughs> so uh, we'll have string uppercase greeting. So greeting to dot uppercase so it'll return back to us all uppercase letters all the way across. Um, to lowercase, so it'll do in the opposite. It will convert on the string to all lowercase. Okay, so let's take a look at our greeting hello world and see these pieces come together. Okay, oops, I'm missing an extra. There we go. Okay, so the character at one, like we said, was E. The length of the string is 13. The substring from index 7 to 12 is world, uppercase, hello world, lowercase, hello world. Uh, so let's talk about creating your own class. Now let's create a simple class and we'll call it person. And in person, we'll uh, create some attributes. So we can use the data variables. We'll do a string name, because person has a name. And let's do an int age, because people have ages. <laughs> All right. So within this, we'll actually create uh, something else known as a constructor. And a constructor is going to be a method, which we'll get more into that later. Um, and we're going to do public person, which takes a string name. I guess I should say a constructor is constructor, not necessarily a method. But um, constructor is going to take a string name and int age to make it, um, and it's going to refer to this its own object itself. So uh, I'm going to say that this name equals the name that we get, and that this age equals the age we get. So referring back to those attributes, name and age up here with these, these are referring to the parameters or arguments given to us in the constructor. So have that there for your notes. So this example are attributes. These are the variables that hold data for each object created from the class in person. So we have two attributes, name and age. And the constructor is going to be a special method that is called when an object is instantiated. So it initializes the object with the values that you provide. Okay. So let's say we were to actually use the uh, person class. 
So we'd want to create a object. Here. So we would create the person. This person one. This is going to equal a new person, which has a name, which is Alice, and her age, she's going to be 30. Person, person two equals that new again person. And this time we're going to do Bob. And Bob's going to be 25. Okay. Now let's see how we can access these attributes that we just got. Uh, created for the person, that name and age. So I'll do a couple things here. Let's get some system.outprints to essentially just get everything together. So we'll do person dot its attribute, similar to what we did with the methods for the string, um, dot the name of it. Um, so with attributes, we don't need to open close parentheses. So we have a person dot name, person one dot name, um, is person one dot age years old. So we're creating a little sentence here for it. Uh, so person dot two dot name and person two dot age. So let's take a look here. Semicolons, uh, add them up there too. So Alice is 30 years old. Yay, Alice. <laughs> Bob is 25 years old. <laughs> so in this code, we create two objects, person one and person two, from the person class. And we can access and print the name and age attributes of each object. So as you can see, a class is a blueprint that defines the properties of an object created from it. And in this instance, person has attributes name and age, which are initialized when we create a new instance of person, so like person one, person two, using the new keyword and its constructor. So just to summarize, uh, encapsulation allows us to wrap data into single unit class, which we'll talk more about that later. But classes are blueprints for create objects, and objects are instances of that class. Uh, attributes are variables that hold data for an object, and constructors are going to be special methods that initialize new objects. With these basic o OOP principles and the ability to create and manipulate objects, you're now ready to start thinking about designing hmm, more complex programs and keep experimenting with your own with, with creating your own classes and objects um, to get a feel for OOP. You'll be doing it a lot, and you technically have already been doing it from the beginning. <laughs> so happy coding. Ah, bon appetit.